The K Sam Wake Up Morning Show. You think about me, number one song in America now four weeks in a row. Morgan Wallen yeah. on 101.7 K Sam. All right, so if you want more people at your holiday party, uh, really push the idea that you'll have lots and lots of food, especially sweets. Mm -hmm. Because 48% of Americans say they have gone to a party before just because of the food, just because (laughs) of the desserts. So a poll looked at some of the most popular holiday favorites Mm -hmm. out there. Uh, Pumpkin spice made the list, but it's not that popular. It only ranked fifth. Mm. Gingerbread is our favorite holiday flavor, apparently, followed by salted caramel, peppermint, Maple, pumpkin spice, chai, cinnamon, and bourbon. Like bourbon balls, not like shots of Jack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Those are good, though. Those are good. Yeah, the average person's going to eat 26 cookies over the holidays, Mm -hmm. 25 pieces of candy, 13 slices of cake, 12 pieces of pie, 13 brownies, 13 cupcakes. I don't know where the partridge and the pear tree landed on that list, but I guess if they're dipped in chocolate, then we'll go after those, too. There are three favorites in our family. One is the Christmas bark that we make, and I make them on Ritz crackers, and they're yummy. (laughs) I, they're yummy. They're yummy. And then there are the snowball cookies, the Italian wedding cookies, and then, of course, the cherry crunch. Okay, 48% of us, almost half, have hidden holiday sweets to prevent roommates and other family members from stealing them. <laughs> right, some of the most common hiding spots. If you want to find out where those sugar cookies are being stashed, uh, look behind other stuff up in kitchen cabinets in the back. Uh, the cupboard that usually doesn't have food in it. Like, like, look for the one that's got bleach and Windex and stuff, and look in the back. I bet you'll find some cookies back there. Uh, and also, <laughs> bathroom cabinets. That's right. Oh, look ma- for the chocolate in the bathroom cabinets. Wait, my mom had a stash for Lorna Doom cookies underneath her bed in a big, huge tin that she'd pull out from time to time for her little <laughs> snack when she'd be reading her books. I'd sit there and go, where did you get these Snickers and these Lorna Dooms? And she goes... And the Pepperidge Farm, you know, little Milano cookies. I'd be like, what are you doing with those? And she says, those are mine. <laughs> those are my special stash. Yeah. <laughs> Look, Brian, but I got a beer in my hand. Hey, that last story we did about the uh, the snacks, uh, the, the Christmas treats and the mm-hmm. holiday treats, and then where they're being hidden. Yeah. Well, in the back of kitchen cabinets is it was one of my go-to spots. So now I have to go find a new spot because I just announced to my family where, <laughs> where to go look. <laughs> it just oh, goodness. <laughs> Like, wait a minute, the kitchen cabinet behind, right next to the fridge. Behind the, oh, man, that's where I kept my cookies. Oh, my grandfather was like that. We'd be downstairs in the living room, and he'd sit there and go, Tracer, you want a ding-dong? I says, no, Grandpa, because that's all the way upstairs in the kitchen. He goes, no, I got a stash. Let me show you. And he'd <laughs> open right up here. underneath the uh, Wi-Fi. He had his little hostess little <laughs> tray in the back and stuff, and he goes, I like a little sweet tooth once in a while, so uh, here you go, go, Tracer. And I'd be all like, right. okay, Grandpa. I said, well, yeah, you better find your stash because your whole family's going to be looking for it. All right, folks, we're going to step out of here and wake up morning show coming back tomorrow. I'll be solo for the rest of the week because mm-hmm. you're going to be taking off to Michigan. Yep, but I'll be back right in early on Monday All when we're right. going to be starting a Moody Gardens contest. You yeah. guys are going to want to get in to the pot and go to our website at ksam1017.com because we're going to draw daily winners from that family four pack of tickets. And that's Monday, November 27th. And the grand prize winner will be announced on December 1st. All right. Very good. Tracy, we'll see you next week. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving to you, Brian. And happy Thanksgiving to you, Huntsville. I'll see you all next week. Luke Bryan on your hometown radio station, 101.7 KCM. Jordan Smith here filling in for Carlos Zimmerman on the Midday Show. Hope your Tuesday is going well so far. A little wind out there today. Make sure you get a a thick coat on you and try to stay warm. Ashley McBride, light on in the kitchen here on 101.7 KCM. Folks, obviously, with it being Thanksgiving week, we're Googling a lot of, of... holiday related stuff whether it be thanksgiving or people trying to get an early jump on on black friday deals so on and so forth um some other things you know how to make thanksgiving food how to uninvite uncle rick without him getting mad so on and so forth but apparently google trends released some data on what people have been googling so far this year here's some of the highlights the first thing a lot of people want recipes for potato dishes but some things are more popular in certain states compared to others. Many states like, you know, they, they like things like al gratin potatoes, cheesy potatoes, mashed or smashed potatoes, various potato soups, baked potatoes. That's all the usual, right? 
Then there's what we call the special states. <laughs> California is looking for potato tacos. Maine is Googling potato donuts. Georgia is cooking the Irish dish coal cannon, which is using potatoes and cabbage. And Tennessee is planning on whipping up some potato candy. Guys, let's calm down a little bit. <laughs> Here's another thing they've been searching. Pies are apparently a big search. Many states are looking for normal varieties like cherry, apple, pumpkin, pecan, and sweet potato pie. But then we, once again, get to the special states. <laughs> Oregon's looking for tamale pie. Pennsylvania has shoe flea pie on the menu. Louisiana's making Mississippi mud pie. And in Mississippi, they're just calling it chocolate pie. Because sure. And Nebraska is really mixing things up with a Frito chili pie. I feel like that's just Frito pie. Is it not? Is that not the whole thing with Frito pie? <laughs> I don't know. Apparently, some of the top questions on Google include how many pounds of potatoes per person for Thanksgiving? When to thaw turkey out for Thanksgiving? How many turkeys are killed for Thanksgiving? Which is kind of a little grim when you think about it. Don't know why people are searching that. And why do we eat turkey on Thanksgiving? Interesting. Another top trending Thanksgiving question over the past week is how to watch Charlie Brown Thanksgiving? Yeah. Because you have to. It's Thanksgiving. You gotta watch Charlie Brown. Duh. Yet another popular search. What time did Black Friday start? When Friday gets here. That's the answer. <laughs> what in the world? On a related note, searches for is Cyber Monday still a thing are up 350%. And overall, apparently right here in the Lone Star State, They've been the state with the most Thanksgiving related searches so far, which makes sense. Everything is bigger in Texas, and now that includes the search history for the holiday. And of all the dishes people are searching for, green bean casserole has the most searches, which suggests that no one, that that's, that's, that's the one we never make, unless it's Thanksgiving, because it just doesn't really fit with any under holiday, I feel like. Clay Walker on your hometown radio station, 101.7 KSAM. Okay, so obviously with it being Thanksgiving, especially today, a lot of us are gonna be traveling if we haven't already, whether it be plane, car, bus, whatever. But let's focus specifically on the flying aspect. If you're flying for Thanksgiving, you wanna bring an entire meal with you, TSA's got you covered. They put out an, intent in a, 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 an annual list of things that you can and cannot bring just to make sure that you'll be safe, you're not gonna get stopped by security, so on and so forth, you'll be fine. Here are five foods that you may not know that you can carry on a plane. Number five, pies, homemade or store-bought, in general, most desserts are okay. Four, fresh fruit and vegetables. If you wanna bring a bag of potatoes or several heads of broccoli, go for it. Number three, green bean casserole. Any casserole is okay, as long as it's not too liquidy. Number two, stuffing. Cooked or uncooked, it's allowed as well as things like mac and cheese. Good, because I was going to have a hissy fit if we couldn't bring mac and cheese. <laughs> and number one, a whole Thanksgiving turkey. Turkey. Somehow you can bring a whole thing of it. It includes raw, cooked, or a frozen bird. You can also carry other meats like ham, for example, as a carry-on. Now here's five foods that you can not carry on with you. If you're flying with them, they have to go in your checked luggage. Number one, gravy. Even if it's thick or frozen, it's still a liquid. You have to check it. Number two, cranberry sauce. Both kinds are considered spreadable, so it's too liquidy to carry on. Jellies and jams also have to be checked into your luggage. Number three, canned vegetables. There's usually too much liquid in there to have it be a carry-on. Makes sense, it's kind of a theme. Speaking of which, number four, maple syrup. It's thick, but it's still a liquid. And number five, Kind of an obvious one, but people still, for whatever reason, like to try it. Alcohol. You can buy stuff at the duty-free store, but you can't take bottles or cans of wine, beer, cider, any other type of booze through the TSA line. Again, that's an obvious one. I don't understand why people still try, but either way, whatever. Just Venmo some money to some people and let them get that cover for you at your destination. Morgan Wallen here on 101.7 KSAM playing today's best country and all of your favorites. All right, time for a stupid criminal. <laughs> There's no other way to put it. Look, 
I'm just gonna ask you this question, right? Have you ever said these words to anybody? If you eat that last taco, I'll kill you. If so, you probably didn't mean it literally. Apparently, this guy did. <laughs> a 53-year-old man in West Virginia named Dale Martin was arrested after allegedly trying to kill someone for, quote, eating all the tacos. The victim said that Dale saw all the tacos were gone, became irate, went to a bedroom, came out with a 22 caliber semi-automatic rifle. The victim saw the gun and ran upstairs, and Dale fired several shots at him, hitting the staircase. It doesn't sound like anybody was hurt, thankfully. Dale was charged with attempted murder. He's being held in jail. It's unclear what kind of tacos they were, because I feel like it's kind of important in all this, but they must have been delicious, because it's hard to imagine anybody shooting someone over Taco Bell. Like, let's be real. There's no way anybody's doing that over Taco Bell. But I'm also trying to figure out, like, what was in these tacos that made them that special? That you almost took a man's life for it. That's what I don't understand. I, I don't know. Everybody stay safe out there this weekend. Garth Brooks here on your hometown home for the holidays. 101.7 K Sam. Folks, if we're already thinking about going past Christmas, right? New Year's. It's on the mind. I know people may or may not yet be thinking about resolutions because, well, we're trying to get through the Black Friday weekend, right? And Cyber Monday and everything else going on with all the discounts, everything else. But if you do have one in mind, we're already talking about why most of us probably won't follow through with them. An early poll on New Year's resolutions found the easiest ones are practicing better hygiene and drinking hygiene and drinking more water. Anything harder takes motivations. Here are the top five excuses for not following through with a resolution, and I will probably be on this list somewhere. <laughs> Number five, you don't see the results right away and get discouraged. Yeah, that, that's me right now, trying to lose some weight. <laughs> Number four, a general lack of motivation. Number three, not enough support from family or friends. Number two, you're way too busy. And the number one reason for not following through with a resolution, the cost. You say you join a gym and you realize, wait, that's actually pretty expensive. That's why you live somewhere if you're in an apartment that has a free gym. And if you are in a home, you have some kind of equipment somewhere. <laughs> you don't have to go to the gym. 75% of people claim they usually set a New Year's resolution. Another 12 said sometimes, but not always. And despite the excuses, we don't always fail on our resolution. 83% said they have had at least some success with the resolution before. That's good. I would at least hope somebody would have been able to follow through with their New Year's resolution, because Lord knows sometimes, most of the time, let me correct myself, most of the time, I haven't been able to follow through with mine. Top 10 software, number 7 on the charts, Tim McGraw, Standing Room Only, here on KSAM.